Hi everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to share with you all how you can replicate creating a dynamic record URL in Flow with Power Automate. For the agenda today, I will do a quick recap of what we can do in classic workflows. Then I'm going to talk about the use case that I'm going to go through as part of this demo, and then we're going to dive straight into it. In classic workflows for CDS and Dynamics 365, when we create an email activity or we send an email activity, we have the ability to reference the record URL of the record that this workflow is associated to. Now this record URL is usually embedded as a hyperlink in the email. And so when the end user receives that email, they can click on the hyperlink, which will automatically launch Dynamics 365 or CDS and reveal the record to the end user. So for the use case that I'm going to show you today, it will be as the newly assigned owner of a case, I want to receive an email with a hyperlink to the case record so that I can easily view the case and action accordingly. So this will be whenever a new owner is assigned to a case, it will trigger the flow, which will send an email with a hyperlink to that particular end user. So without further ado, let's jump straight into my flow. This is what my flow looks like. And as mentioned, it will be triggered whenever a new owner is assigned to that case. In here, I have my filtering attribute set to the owner ID field. And the next action that is in this flow is to retrieve the user record based on the owner that has been newly assigned to that case. And the reason why we are retrieving the user record is so that we can reference their full name or first name and email address downstream in the flow. Now the next action is to identify what the organization base URL is of this particular instance. What I'll do now is I'll switch to my model driven app, which is the customer service hub app. And in here at the top of the browser is essentially the record URL value that we want to recreate. Now, when you take a closer look at the record URL, you can start, well, you can see that there are different jigsaw pieces that make up this record URL. And that's essentially what we want to uncover one by one to create the record URL inflow in Power Automate. I'm going to switch to my slides so that I can um, use my slides to help explain the different jigsaw pieces for your understanding and your learning. What you see on the screen right now is the record URL that was in the browser. And I'm going to break it down now where I've color coded it and I've, I've numbered it in order so that it can help with your learning. So number one is the organization base URL for Dynamics 365 or CES. So as part of the record URL, it needs to know what environment or instance you're directing that user to. Now, number two is in regards to uh, another bit of uh, the URL, the main.aspx, but this is something that we don't need to dynamically uh, retrieve. It's always going to be uh, a fixed value and same with the app ID. So the app ID represents the model driven app that you want to direct the end user to. And this is where number three comes in handy, where it's essentially the ID of that model driven app so that the hyperlink when clicked on, it will know that it needs to go to this particular environment, but this particular app. So in my scenario, it's the customer service app that we want to direct the end user to. Now, number four defines what you want to load. And what we want to load is the page type where it is of entity record. So the page type defines what is it that you want to load? I think I just repeat myself, <laughs> sorry. And then the entity name 
for that entity record, what is it? So in my scenario, it's incident. So incident represents a case in Dynamics 365 or in CDS. And then the last component, so number five, is the ID of that record. So in my example, it is the case that triggered this flow. And so that's what the record URL is made up of. And the first thing that we need to do is identify the organization base URL. I'm going to go back to my browser and I'm going to share a fellow Microsoft MVP's blog post. His name is Natraj. Natraj created this blog post last year where he shared how you can identify the base organization URL, which is what I'll show you next. Back in my flow, I'm going to show you the run history and show you a value from the get user record action that you would have seen in my flow. And what I'll show you here is that there is a value that contains that organization base URL as seen in Natraj's blog post. Now that value is the at odata.id. And in here, we can see that the organization base URL can be extracted, but we don't want the rest of uh, the characters in this particular uh, value. And so what Nat Raj's blog post is doing is using a couple of expressions, sorry, a couple of functions. Let me get my jargon right. So the first one is to split it. And how he splits it is by um, the forward slash API forward slash. And as a result of that split, it's going to generate two rows and we only want that first row. So I'm going to show you what this actually looks like in Power Automate. I'm going to add a brand new compose action just to illustrate what uh, Natraj's uh, expression is doing. So the first one that we're going to do is use a split uh, expression. So I'm just going to copy it from down here. So this is where I mentioned that we are splitting it by the forward slash API forward slash value. And so I'm going to run this flow now. And as a result, we're going to see two rows that have now been formed which is essentially uh, two rows in an array. Okay, so here it is. As you can see, there's two rows and we only want the first row of this particular um, output. And so if I go back to edit, and let me go ahead and delete that. And if we have a look at my expression here, that is where I have wrapped the split function around, no, that is where I wrap, sorry, this is where I wrap the split function with a first function. So that way it's saying, first of all, split my value based on the forward slash API forward slash, but only grab that first row in that array from that output. So that's what this entire expression means. I will provide the full details of the expression in my blog post, so go ahead and check it out. Now, number two was, sorry, number three was to identify the app module ID. So this is the uh, green part in here. And once again, I'm going to turn to another Microsoft MVP's uh, blog post. Her name is Sarah Ligerquist. So in here, this is where she describes how we can use the CDS list records action against the model driven app entity. Now this makes sense because of how we want to reference the ID of that particular model driven app that we want to direct the end user to. So when we have a look at um, one of the CES slash Dynex365 API requests, there's one called entity definitions. And so if I only retrieve the app module details, and if we scroll down, we can see that um, there's a primary attribute of app module ID, which is the value that we want to use. But we can also see that the uh, user friendly name for this particular entity is called model driven apps. And so this is what the CDS list records action is retrieving. It is calling the model driven apps uh, entity. 
And in here, what I'm doing is inserting a filter query where we're going to filter the model driven app that is retrieved based on the name value. Now to identify the, the name of the model driven app, if you don't know what it is, you can simply copy and paste the app ID value that you can see within your model driven app and use it in an API request that will allow you to retrieve that particular information in terms of what is the name value. So in here, this is what I'm doing. I'm calling the API that's going to retrieve the app module where the app module ID equals this value in here. And then as we scroll down, we can see that there's a property called name. And essentially this is what we're going to use in our CDS list records action as part of that filter query. And it's only ever going to retrieve one uh, record. And so that's what we're doing. And so that is how we identify the model driven app ID. And so in terms of grabbing number five, which is the ID of the record that we want to direct the user to, that one is straightforward. We simply just need to reference the ID of the case from the trigger. So then the next bit is combining everything all together in one piece of string so that it can be used as a hyperlink in our email activity that is created by Flow. Once again, I'm gonna head over to my PowerPoint and I'm going to use this to help me explain what the expression is that I'm using. Okay, first of all, this is what the expression is. And once again, I'm going to break it down for you. So with number one, we are grabbing the base organization, um, the, sorry, the organization base URL that's going to form that hyperlink. Essentially, it is the exact same expression that we used in our compose action. And then the next step, number two, is just to add this in so that it will allow the hyperlink to um, pull up the app that we want to direct the user to. And in order to reference that ID, the app module ID value, this is where we're referencing the output from the CDS list records action. And this is simply saying, grab me the app module ID value from the output of the CDS list records action. If you have seen my WTF episode on how to avoid the apply to each appearing, I'm applying one of the techniques in here where I'm saying only grab um, the app module ID from the first row in the array because if you don't do this it's going to bring up the apply to each and it's going to cocoon your um, action that you're referencing the app module id from okay so number three uh, like i mentioned is essentially the page type so we want to load an entity record and that the name of that particular entity that we want to load is incident um, I do have a docs.microsoft.com article that will talk about this more in detail in my blog post, so go ahead and check that out. And then finally, number five is simply referencing the ID of the case from the trigger. So this is what the entire expression looks like when we want to form that record URL and embed it as a hyperlink in an email activity that is created in Flow with Power Automate. Wow, that was a mouthful. <gasps> Just breathe. Okay. All right. I'm good. So back in my flow, that expression will live in here in my HTML uh, content, which is a compose action. So in here, I'm referencing the first name, which is from this particular action where I have retrieved the user. And we also have some HTML tags so that we can apply it in my email uh, downstream in the flow. Now, if you have seen my previous WTF episodes, the next three actions are pretty much what I've shown 
before. So we have a CDS list records action that is retrieving the queue based on the name of the queue. And then we also have a create a new email activity record where I'm referencing um, the user as the to recipient and the sender as the queue. And then down here in the description field, that is where I'm referencing the output from my compose action that contains the beautiful expression that um, will create the record URL that is gonna be embedded as a hyperlink in the email. And then lastly, we have a action that's going to go ahead and send my email message. So I've already um, tested this before earlier when I showed you the breakdown of Natraj's um, technique in grabbing the organization base URL. So I'm just gonna head over to that inbox now. So that was that little chime that you heard earlier when I was doing the demo. And so this is what the email ultimately looks like. Uh, as we can see, it's displaying a hyperlink and that was based on the hyperlink uh, HTML tag that I use. And then once I click on this, it will automatically direct me to that case record in my model driven app. And there you go. That is how you replicate creating a record URL in Flow with Power Automate. I broke it all down for you and I've also written it in my blog post. So go ahead and check that out if you wanna see more details and step-by-step -step guide of how to do this in Flow. And thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Turn up. Let's go. Let's go.